Hey everyone, it is November 10th, a little bit after midnight. Uh, this is Pixels Get Me. You are listening to the Pixels Get Me podcast. Uh, I'm a uh, content creator over at Mixer.com, uh, streaming five nights a week. Uh, currently, I'm playing Diablo 3 on the Switch, and I will probably be playing that for the foreseeable future. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, everything from uh, Diablo Immortal to uh, some Switch news, a little bit of Path of Exile announcements, covering a little bit on Warframe, a new game called Pagan Online, and then we're going to kind of get into tech with the new Fossil Sport smartwatch and uh, some foldable phone news. Uh, on the round table tonight, we've got uh, Firebird, Curbs, and Emon. Uh, Firebird, can you, uh, can you give us a quick intro and say hey to everybody? Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is Firebird129. So, I am a huge lover of games. I've been playing games for several years now. Um, I'm also going to school for development, so I love all kinds of software development technology. So, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun here. Cool, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so, when you're saying development, what all are you, uh, what are target platforms? What are you developing? So, right now I'm in software development. Um, Prior to actually doing software, though, I was actually going to school for mobile development. So I was doing making applications for phones and tablets. And then I've also gone to school for computer electronics. So I'm good on the software and the Cool, man. Thanks for the intro. Um, we've also got, uh, and, and welcome to the podcast, by the way. Uh, we've also got Curbs. Curbs, are you on? Uh, you live? All right, guys, thanks for joining the Pixels Get Me podcast. It's been a fun night. It's time for Kicks of the Curbs, your favorite segment of the day. No. All dude. right, so Pixels play the no, video. Dude, we're not, we're not doing that. What? <laughs> we're, not, we're, 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 we're not. We're not. We're not at the moment. Is, did I, did I can, mess up? We can do it later. Right. Is that? All right. Uh, well, now I'm Iman? <laughs> Iman, you there? What's up, man? <laughs> Yeah, I'm here, man. All right, Sorry, cool. Just trying cool. not to die laughing. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Um, all right, what's up, Iman? What you uh, what you up to? Nice to see you again. Yeah, man. Good to be back again. Always a pleasure. Um, still playing Black Desert, Path of Exile. Uh, tried out a little bit of Maple Story too, and uh, who knows? We'll see what else comes up. Sweet, sweet. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, let's get into the news, shall we? So we've got um, a couple of things that happened since the last podcast. I know that that we talked very briefly about BlizzCon last week. Uh, basically, just talking a little bit before the. I don't know if that even made it onto the podcast. Talking about the new uh, hero on Overwatch, Ash, and a little bit about Diablo. But um, this article uh, came out a couple days ago. Um, it looks like they're talking more and more about other other titles coming to mobile besides just Diablo Immortal kind of Blizzard making that pivot kind of like how Sears a long time ago had a had a magazine that you could order things from and then it became a big box store uh, and now it's going out of business that sort of thing like that kind of pivot um, <laughs> cause like, out of business? Cause, cause the internet what? happened, the internet happened and Sears didn't really ever make anything for the internet. They just thought that these big stores would survive. Um, so in a similar way, Blizzard is pivoting to mobile and, uh, it feels like, uh, the heartbeat of the internet is that they're forsaking all of their PC people, the people who've built that company from, from nothing. Uh, so there's a lot of hate. I don't know what you guys feel about it. Um, I know if Diablo Immortal comes out, which, again, I'm just saying if it comes out because, you know, things have been announced at BlizzCons before and haven't come out. StarCraft Ghost, for instance. Um, if it comes out, I'm going to play it, but maybe you guys will, maybe you guys won't. Uh, what are you guys thinking? I'm going to give it a try no matter what. I mean, because I try all games regardless whether I think they're going to be garbage or not. All right, Iman is an equal opportunity gamer. All right, what else? Who else has an opinion? All right, I'm also going to try out the game when it comes out. Um, it's definitely a different turn for them since they don't do multiple games. Mm. Um, but I think it's going to be 
I know it's not what people wanted, but I think it's going to be a good turn for them just because so many people are starting to go for their gaming. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about them partnering with Netties though? I know they're big into a lot of, uh, a lot of people are saying big mobile clones, but from what I was understanding of it, they're trying to work for that to not happen on this one. Um, it's more of a the blizzard team is working with them in order to actually make the game yeah that's what that's what they're saying right so we'll see if uh if that story stays true you know but a lot of people are assuming this is going to be like a, a reskin of what guardians of light or some other uh games that they've made but really i mean reskin and similar mobile tried and pr tried and true you know action game controls like they all look the same because that's the best way to control uh, with a touch screen, you know? So people were kind of hating, but yeah, I hear you. Hey, Curbs, you got anything on this? Uh, uh, yes. Saving yes, the best for last, obviously. Go ahead, man. Okay, so you can, the reason. You can insert thing, this article into the shredder if you like. The re <laughs> the, I'm going to start with the reskin. It's, it's not a reskin. It's using the same UI controls, sure, but that's just because they're proven to work and the most common right. in the most common period for this type of thing. So that's no, that that's a no. Uh, the this article I very much dislike, very much dislike, because all it's the the entirety of what this thing says is the fact that it, all they're doing is stating the fact that. The developers have said what they have for years and that they have multiple different projects with multiple different teams and blah, blah, blah. And that, for some reason, made these people think, oh, that just be, that means they're going to do everything on mobile now. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's what all the... Pro no, this this article is just fluff. I just like, no. Okay, but... No, so, so no, are, no, no, no. There are other articles that say specifically, you know, that senior vice presidents... Uh, the new guy, uh, Jay Allen or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. uh, he he is doing a pivot into mobile. So that this Which article doesn't say that, but every single franchise they have, they have a mobile version of it coming. Which is fine. Which, they, if they want to do in go into mobile, they're more than welcome to. Exactly. It'll give them more profit to put into the games, which will end up making them into just their PC games into just better in general. But, and, but the whole notion games in general would become yeah. better that they make in general. Yeah. yeah, in general, man, definitely in general. Yeah, no, but uh, so I don't think I don't think that's I don't think that's a problem. Uh, that'll give them more money to put into games, which will make them better, and then vice versa. The games will go back into the MOBA and make everything. Any, but uh, the fact I think the problem, at least with. BlizzCon and them announcing in Diablo more uh -oh, is it's primarily close. the fact <laughs> that all they announced was Diablo Immortal. And they, they waited give... till the very end. Yeah. Yeah. They give Diablo the first and the most upfront and best spot, first panel, everything. Right after the, right up. after, yeah. Right after the yeah. uh the keynote, yep. Yeah. And they leave the Diablo Immortal announcement to the very end mm. of the intro mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. D3 for or I mean BlizzCon, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And 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 then they played the trailer, the cinematic for it. Diablo Immortal. Oh, crap. Wait, there's that. Wait, what? Like you've got people coming from all over buying hotel rooms tickets which are way too expensive to see this stuff for for it and then they're pc based and then all they announce is diablo immortal yeah that that doesn't that that completely just that completely just like segregates it takes them out of the like I mean, it, like what it, did you expect them to do to announce Diablo 4? I mean, yes. it took them 20 no. years. To yes, I expected it them. No, 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 no. There's no, no way no. they're going to do Diablo okay. 4 in less than you that. But, but here's, here's the thing. No, Pixels. Dude, here's the thing. Pixels. If, if, they, if they save this for any other day, the Diablo Immortal announcement for any 
other yeah. day than the last five minutes of the opener. It would have it would have been received in an, a completely different way. And had they ended with the Diablo 4 logo, like I'm not even talking animated, all right? Just said, hey, here's the Diablo 4 logo. Yeah. By the way, the, the what's next panel, like we're not going to talk about that logo. We're just going to talk about that game, that, that mobile game that's coming out that we mentioned a month ago. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, but we can't really answer any questions about Diablo 4 at the moment. Except yeah. here's the logo. Like, that would have been perfection. I mean, people would have been frustrated because they flew that all the way for a logo, but... It took them, what? It took them 20-something years to do Diablo 3 from Diablo 2. I mean, come on now. Well, I think they were a little distracted making... They were a little distracted making $150 million a month with uh, with World of Warcraft to care about Diablo. It's not like it took them exactly. 20 years to develop it. It took them 20 they're years to be making, like, oh, here's one. They're still not making that much off of Diablo 3. I mean, no, they didn't make any money. Everybody a coffee. They didn't make any. <laughs> they didn't make any money off Diablo three. There's no way. Hmm. Right. So I mean, why do you think they would push to do a forward then? No curbs. Like seriously, think about it, man. No, like, I'm thinking about. It. They didn't make curbs, any money off. Me monster. I, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. He's he said something while you were saying your thing. I didn't say anything. You you, you grumbled. You said something. What? what? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I thought I thought you something, said something. Something, some, something about what now? I no. know you wanted to hear more ranting about the other one. No, like all I all I heard I heard I thought it I heard Curbs uh, <laughs> grunt something about about Diablo not making any money. I don't think Diablo three has made any money. I, I, don't, I don't think it did either. I don't think it made as near as much money as they were hoping to do. Yeah. But, you know, well, there was they, also I, like, they had plans to make money. And then the entire player base revolted over a over a, a paid auction house. I think they made money, but then when they couldn't sustain the money, that's because of the auction house and things like that. It, they it just went. I think they made money and then just died after, and could not make any more because they didn't revitalize a plan to actually do it. They didn't. They didn't go for. They didn't go for like the Asia route where you do right. paid cosmetics and whatnot, and that kind of killed them. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think some cosmetics would be nice though. Like, oh, I know, right? And stash tabs. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody made some. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even actually play when the auction house was available. Correct. Neither did I. <laughs> I made a but, lot of money off of that. But the thing is, but Blizzard like, made money too. Yeah. Yeah. It, Blizzard made the money that at least they, they most likely made the money that they put into it. They didn't make more, so there wasn't really like a large profit. Well, at business they point. Diablo sell, sold pretty well, man. Like it, it was it sold really well when it first came out. No, but, something right, something like something the, like top ten, top ten yeah. game sales. You know? Oh, yeah, so know, they made back what they put into it. The problem is they couldn't get any more out of it, I'm pretty sure, and that made their shareholders not happy. No, and honestly, though, like I think, I think even top ten game sales nowadays isn't making money. That's breaking even. Like so, they <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> probably came close to breaking even. What everyone makes money off of now is like doing, uh, you know, like uh, expansions, uh, expansion passes. Uh, loot boxes, um, you know, cosmetics, stuff like that. Like, and they didn't have that that monetization platform, you know. Right, and Iron's got a uh, Iron's got a good point there. Like the story, you know, was so so for him, you know, and it was so so for me. I don't even like doing this. Story. The story wasn't good overall. It really wasn't. Yeah, KSM and fifteen and fifteen million copies. I mean, that's like it's like pennies, man. You know, um, yeah. I, I know. I know that's a it's a huge number and everything, but really, like the amount of people the and of, like, the the Blizzard machine moving, you know, for X amount of years to make the game, like maybe broke even, you know. But yeah, the story yeah. the story is a whole other thing. Like everyone was like, um, "Is this a joke?" Like you guys are kind of like making fun of your own story. Like it's like funny, you know. It wasn't that, even funny. It was boring. It was <laughs> it's like, you know, a couple Deckard Kane quotes, and like everyone's like, ah, uh, what? is that it? Oh, uh, we got. 
Uh, Reaper of Souls is good, I thought, but um, it kind of made the game into yeah, something people I, I, wanted I agree. to play. Reaper yeah. Souls did make the game playable. But... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I played the game because I enjoyed it. I didn't really bother. With, I didn't pay attention to any of the story as I went through it. It was just playing the game really and going in game after. Yeah, like the rifts, the greater rifts, that stuff, like great. The story, I can you can't even like pay me to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. All right, anyone got anything again, else on I this? Like story. Um, I agree <laughs> that they definitely should not have done what they did to announce it and just been like, "Hey guys, we're making a mobile," and then been done with it because it would have been more received. Or, or, like, casually, accidentally leaked it, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, that makes sense. That would have gone over so much better, but they decided to do what they did, and then... Oh, God. The developers. Like, if you watch back... If you look at his face, man. Panels, he says it, dude. Like, the... Yeah, the panels, the announcement of it, every... Like, oh, I felt so... Like, I dislike overall the fact that that's all they had released and that is how they did it but jesus man they got cr can you imagine if you were them up on stage and from what i've seen people that have talked to them they were genuinely excited about it and then they get crucified yep like i like as much as i'm not a huge fan of how they did it holy shit man well i mean it goes to, it goes to, it goes to show like you know, people like expect things, but nobody wants to put anything into it either. So I mean, like, all these people that crucified them for doing any of this has never even tried to make a game. Yeah, totally. Like, Just let alone a thirty-second clip to 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 like try to pitch a, a game story to, to any company. Like, yeah, go try and do that for. Yeah, like, when you come the way they did it, they completely just. The, they made it seem like they were completely just throwing away their fans, like the PC fans, and yeah, they definitely crucified them, Iron. But yeah, it was like, like it was the first time there's been booing at, at a BlizzCon. Like there, the guy who's being referred to now is I, I don't know if they've actually found out who it is, but just a dude in a red shirt yeah, came red up shirt and said, "Is this an out of a out of season April Fool's joke?" Yep, and that like. No, these and the people they had streaming there, like who the people in the Diablo just in general uh, community that they had streaming go works. People were goading them on to try and rant and bash and do all these things and like, man, no, it was really bad. Yeah, there, there was. A, I'm just gonna do a, a quick YouTube link. I'm not gonna open it up on on stream or anything. But I highly recommend you guys watch this video because uh, this is from Leviathan. Uh, he's a he's a major uh, component of the D3 streaming community. Um, he was there sitting right next to all the Diablo streamers. You know, made sure they got good seats, made sure everything was ready. You know, they were they were even tasting like a little bit of Diablo 4 hype in the air, even though like they said specifically nothing's gonna happen. They were just like like what is this? Like they were so excited, and uh, he explains the entire the entire climate like in the room like going cold you know like uh when they said it like they said immortal mobile and everyone was just like uh mm -hmm. is this serious like what, what, mm -hmm. what like did, uh, 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 what you know like everyone just like looking back and forth at each other like are, are they trolling us like is this serious like what what do we say what do we do like how, how are we supposed to respond to this like we're pc gamers since you know, Diablo 1, Diablo 2, you know, like, playing Diablo 2 in high school or whatever, like, they're all, like, looking back at their lives, and, like, it's all just being ripped from them, you know, like, it's, he does a really good job, a little 25-minute stream of consciousness, just kind of putting you in the scene, um, and, and, you know, gives us thoughts, too, but, uh, but it's a good, it's a good little breakdown from that yeah. seat, you know, from that perspective, and he doesn't shred it, he doesn't completely shred it, he just explains, like, the emotional roller coaster that was that night you know it's kind of kind of interesting if uh i believe Riker put out a very good video yeah like I, haven't, I haven't watched Rikers yet i'm sure Rikers is good it's as a, well it, it's it's a bit lengthy but it it explains a lot why uh, is Riker not lengthy fair enough 
But I mean, he took multiple weeks to compose everything he wanted to say, and it it, it turned out pretty decent and gave yeah, you a lot. Yeah, to shave off some of the lengthiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, man. I have never like I watched the opening ceremony. I have never like, I heard for, for like builds and stuff because he does do good. But yeah. man, I don't like listening to him to talk for twenty minutes just to tell me how to put one thing. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I understood. I have never heard, like, I've heard awkward silence and pity claps and whatnot before. Yeah. I have never heard someone at, or a crowd boo like that. Well, like, the silence and then the silence to the booing. You know, like, yeah. it's it's weird. But, and I uh, get they were they were just genuinely excited, but the whole, you all have smart, everyone has smartphones, right? It's like... That just, I get they were, it, it was, it seemed like genuine shock, but. Yeah, just but out, like, out of touch. Like, they they definitely yeah. weren't, weren't rehearsed to, to deal with that. Like, they could have done, um, you know, a, uh, what is it called? Like, a focus group, you know, where, like, someone pitches yes. an idea and then they watch what happens, you know? Yes. They're like, okay, cool, like, these are some of the questions we're going to get. These are some of the looks on the faces we're going to get. This is some of the quietness that's about to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of prepare yourself. But it, it seemed like they were completely off base. Yeah, yeah they get... what... go ahead. No, go go go. You, go you, firebird. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like they just—you can tell from the look on their face and all this happens. They just—they weren't expecting that much of an uproar about the app when they yep. released this game. Yeah. Like they just—they didn't know how to respond at all. Like they had no clue that this was gonna happen. Yeah. yeah it almost would have I... been better if it was like Diablo Immortal and then the Destiny guy came out and then like they do the rest of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they pull the Destiny guy out to make Diablo Immortal look better. Yeah, because the Destiny guy, you guys, you guys know the Destiny guy got be got booed. Even though they gave yes. Destiny to yes. to everyone for free, he still got booed. Like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, but then again, like you gotta like you gotta also think like a lot of the people they just expect things to be. Oh, they're gonna only make this thing and they're only gonna do this thing, but. Yeah. All they do is whine, and nobody yeah. ever actually listens. No, you're right, you're right. I think the whole, there, everyone has a smartphone comment, just threw salt, and like, they, I don't, I, I don't think they meant it the way it sounded, but that just, like, threw salt in the wound. Yeah, totally. I would have been worse, dude, if I was on the stage, because I would have told him shut, you know, I would have just told him <laughs> shut up, because you guys all have smartphones, I can see them blinking in your pocket. Yeah, and but, but you, no one, no one serious, but no one in that audience seriously games on their smartphone. That was that was the whole. The, but the problem, it doesn't matter know? if you seriously game on your smartphone or not. There's like 50 billion people that use their smartphone daily to game as well. Other than these thousands of people that were there that only want to cry about their PC. Yeah. So, yeah. and this goes back to what we were saying earlier. If they announced it, you know, off some random tweet. Yes. You know, a month before. Then it would have been received completely differently than the most hardcore fans, who only have clicked mice since they were ch their children, you know, and yeah, uh, and then smacking them in the them? face. They all look like they belong in the basement of Troy. <laughs> all right, let's not let's not profile no, no, the BlizzCon not audience. I'm, not that I'm any prettier looking than them. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I belong in the freaking cell, dude. Well, so, <laughs> part of what I was thinking about it though is. Yes, they were all hoping there'd be a Diablo 4 reveal or a reveal for some other PC Diablo aspect. Right. But I don't think what they need, what they're realizing is companies do have to branch out to other markets. I mean, yes, they have a good base of people who love Diablo, Diablo for their PC, but they've got to realize that they need to branch out to other markets. So go on mobile, they're going to be able to bring that much more people to Diablo. And if it blows up, they can easily work on bringing more to the PC also. Right. So, I mean, even if this their whole big goal on this is monetization, it's still more towards Diablo in the end. Right. And I, I think a lot of people get that, but at the same time, I think people are just really annoyed that they did it how they did it, and that's the only thing about it that they... Like, even if they put, like, a Diablo 4 or something, this is the logo, like Pixel said... You know, or just anything about like, even if they talked about balance changes in in Diablo three, like you know, this is, uh, this is the, we're changing, doing balance changes for Diablo three next next season. I think that people would have been a lot happier 
is the I, it's, it's the way they did it's wrong. Yeah, I think that what they need to do with Diablo Three is just get rid of the meta thing. <laughs> yeah, or just constantly do balance changes, which will change the meta. Which will exactly. Be yeah, it's hard because people will will quickly math it out and find the next meta. You know. Right, right. And, and then, then they then... change it again. And then next season they change patches, and oh look at that! Now the meta is not the meta. It just gives you more to play, even if they math it out. It just gives you more to play, more to experience. Yeah, like, but we're talking they... we're talking about changing a game that makes no money, you know? Like right. how do they how do they make that decision to continue to change something that's not going to give them anything in return? Because that's why they reached out to yeah. Diablo Mo- Mobile, and why we've been on the same patch for almost a year, I think, or or now a solid year. I mean, I think two six one. Two no. seasons. No, dude, 261 is... Three. Yeah. No, Pixels is right. Yeah, it's been like a year. Yeah. We've been on 261 for a year. Well, because they put us in, they put it into maintenance mode, they're not making any serious changes again. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. They, they put it on the, what's it called, games uh, team. Yeah, 261, yeah. 261 patch notes were, were 10, 12, 2017. That's crazy. Do you wow. guys think... If they had done the whole changing the meta, like we're saying, and put cosmetics, the game would be more alive than it is now. If they put like, cosmetics to begin like with, like paid cosmetics, be like yeah. it is in Asia. No, like so. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about Path of Exile, and I'd actually like to start moving moving more yeah, towards yeah, the other yeah, articles, but move. but yeah, like Path of Exile. I'm just going to say this one thing, like the fact that they come out with a new cosmetic nearly at least one every week shows that that model works you know like yeah here's this portal hey by the way here's dragons yeah there's also dragons this and dragons this and everyone buys the dragons and then like a couple weeks later this comes out and this is part of this set and everyone buys that or even if one percent of the people buy it it's not even everyone buys it one percent of the players buy it you know you make your you make your money in in microtransactions from whales they know one to ten percent of people are going to buy something you know, unless it's stash and tabs, those... maybe more than ten percent, but you know. Well, almost everybody buys a stash tab eventually. Right. But um, there's also those, there's also those people that are like, you know, uh, I played another game with with uh, with a guy. He was he was an oil banker, and he bought everybody everything. If you play with him and you wanted something, he bought it for you. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because because if other people are enjoying the game with you, it makes you enjoy the game more. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's move on. Sounds good, guys. Yeah, man. Let's go. All to right. That YouTube on Switch. Yeah. Let's, well, let's do this uh, Super Mario thing real quick. So this is like not not new news by any chance, but uh, my wife and I were talking about it today, so I wanted to bring it up. So new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe is coming to Nintendo Switch in January, um, and this is something like you know family time. Wow, World Traveler, nice on the nice tickets. Nice tickets, bro. Congrats. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we used to play a lot of new Super Mario Brothers Wii. We skipped the Wii U and just went straight into the Switch. So we have not played this at all, so we're kind of looking forward to this. That's all I want to say about that. Anyone have any fan, you know, fun with, uh, with Mario? Anyone huge fans of Mario? I mean, I grew up on Mario, man. Booyah. I was a kid when Mario came out. 1985. <laughs> no, when the original Mario came out, man, like, I like, was like, maybe sixth grade. Maybe going into seventh grade. Good stuff. Mario games are great. It, it's one of those games that are great at all ages. Yeah, looks really good. And I like the logo too because I got like the the red and the blue switch thing on the side. Anyway, all right, let's uh, let's move on to another bit of YouTube uh, switch news. So we got uh, we got YouTube on the switch finally, which is awesome. Um, and then. This is from The Verge, and the first thing they ask in like the subtext is, "Where's Netflix?" You know, so that's probably going to happen too soon. But um, but it that's depends. cool. You, you, I mean, what do you think? Gone for like a uh, YouTube could have gone for a uh, exclusive, exclusive on mm. it, and bar other things from going on there, which is fine because if anything I've learned is if your exclusive it doesn't matter if it's really actually good quality or not, people are going to use it. You know that's that's interesting. You say that like they could have paid for exclusivity, but um, I don't know if you guys saw the the Disney streaming service now has a name called it's called Disney Plus, and like yeah. that would be that would be what a very smart Disney move is to get Disney Plus 
exclusively on the Switch and lock out Netflix. Or or even the Nintendo uh, Nintendo platform in general. Just Nintendo streaming service? Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be good too, but it's just about that content, you know? Like, we're about to have a content war between Disney and Netflix, so it'll be interesting to see what oh, happens yeah. there. Think about it. Disney's, like, family-friendly, where Nintendo has always been family-friendly. Exactly, yeah. It is like, oh, you, of course you can watch Disney+. Plus. I don't even have to check what you're watching. You're either watching cartoons, Star Wars, or Marvel stuff. You're good to go. Go ahead, kid. You're not watching Spartacus. <laughs> I don't know if they would limit themselves, though. Honestly. It depends on the money, man. It depends no, on the money. If they, if they buy exclusivity on Switch, let's just say Switch in general, right? Let's say they, they pay for it for a year. Nobody else can play on there, so they're, they're on there. But they can still go anywhere they want. Yeah. For any no, no, I'm, I'm, talking about, I, I'm talking about why Nintendo would limit like that. I don't... For money, dude. Money. Money. I understand that, but if you're able to get money from all of them, I mean... Rather than, if it's enough, sure, but I don't... Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, it really depends on how much money, like, Disney has basically a, a blank check right now. They could write yeah. any amount of money to anyone, and if Nintendo's like, yeah, I mean, you give us $200 million, of course, you'd, uh, you'd be able to just have your Disney Plus thing on our, on our platform for a year. And then, you know, in a year, we'll talk about it again, you know? And then, like, the next time they want to do it, yeah, it's actually, like, $400 million this time. Are you sure you want to pay? And then Disney's like, Especially yeah, actually, this well, is yeah. great. <laughs> of course we'll pay. And then half a billion dollars later, you know, like, it would have been way better than uh, than getting Netflix on there and not really making any – or not making much money, you know? It, it's it's tricky to uh, – the ex- exclusivity is how you, how you make money, you know? Like, it's lucrative. Yeah. I think Disney at least would win in that fight if it's just throwing. Disney would 100% win in the fight if it's just throwing money at Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Because that's when it comes to getting like exclusive exclusive rights to something like that. It, it's just about who has the more money. It doesn't even matter if your quality is very good. Yeah, I just don't know if Nintendo would limit themselves for that. But yeah, yeah, it'd have to be. Who thinks YouTube fat, is gonna die? A fat at check. This point? <laughs> <laughs> like who thinks YouTube's legitimately gonna die at this point with all the stuff that's been going around? I, I, what, YouTube yeah. or, I or think, Netflix? I think YouTube's gonna be around for a while, and I think Netflix is gonna be around for a while. Disney Plus needs to stake their claim, and they need to do it like hard. So if this is how they do it, the 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 fastest number one selling console ever, uh, yeah, that would be smart. You know, especially it's since it's, it's, since it is a target audience of you know preteen and younger or whatever. You know, but. Well, in this market, anyway. Yeah. Right, right. In Japan, it's, it's a way of life, but yeah. Yeah, in Japan, Nintendo is like toast. I think it's yeah. Like, and then in China, it's like all phones or not, but different markets. Are different. Korea is more phones than China is. It. Uh, no, I think no, China's or at the got very a lot least, of phones too. Yeah, China's the most like the majority of people. Yeah. Don't have like consoles and all that. Oh yeah, because like, they can't. Most... They can't even get enough food, but. Yeah. Well, that's a whole I different mean, it story. depends on where you are, but yeah, that that depends on where you are. But... And that that went dark quick. All right, so let's yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's if you're in on. Hong Kong, like <laughs> if you're living in like penthouse in Hong Kong, I think you can afford a phone. All right, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Iman break the news on the next article for Path of Exile <laughs> doing private leagues. Go for it, Iman. Tell us what's up. Oh man, private leagues. Private leagues is going to be interesting. I think it's kind of based. It's more geared towards the uh, the ten percent of actual streamers that stream like really big in Path of it. So, so what's a league? What's a league, Iman? So, every every six months or so is is a new league. Um, you can also do with this with this thing. You can do a new league whenever you want. Like I could do a, a league Monday and be like, eh, I'm bored with this league. Let's make another league next week. And then, so, go yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so so by having their own custom private leagues, you can kind of change what kind of features. You can change drop rate. Can you change leveling rate? Can you change? Can you make things? Uh, I don't think you make them easier, but you can make them harder. Yeah. You're looking at the one I'm looking at. If you scroll down, you can change. Uh, it has a, a little thing in there about what mods you can add. Right there, you go. 
League difficulty mods. So no vending, famine. <laughs> your your life, mana, energy, flask do not refill when you go to town. Nice. So you have to basically fill it with the blood of your enemies. Nice. Okay. Reduce resistance, which is normal, which is good because as you you know progress to the game, you lose resistance anyway. Uh, you also have no stash, which will make it for really interesting. No stashes? This one's for the true masochists. Without the ability to store items for later, characters in a no stashes league need to live off the land with constraints that make completing Path of Exile a lot more challenging. Dude, that's insane. I would never play that game. <laughs> yeah, that is just ab I, see, I don't even play heck? the game, and I know that's painful. What in the heck? <laughs> that is so wrong. Uh, no. It also just, means you no. can't... Like, so being a private league though you don't have the option to sell to other players either yeah because you, yeah it makes it so, it makes no it harder than easier no, nobody to buy anything doesn't matter yeah because right now you can go on poe.trade and you can find someone in the delve league who has something for you for a couple of chaos and then you're a happy camper and this it's almost like solo self found with the but other 10 people who might be in your league you yeah know. yeah Mm -hmm. So we could create like a stream, like a Pixels Get Me streaming private private challenge league, where we just yeah. kind of hang out and you know do our own thing. I don't know if that would that would make sense. I, I would uh, I would I was thinking about doing at least one, you know. Yeah, you know, just, just like see a how ten it goes. day challenge. Yeah, no life it, you know. <laughs> I don't think I have that many days off. I can take off. In, I don't think I do either. <laughs> I think the progress you would make just in terms of getting gear and everything you need would be so limited. It take it take a while to actually get to where you're doing what you want. Yeah, like yeah. you can't trade, like you said, you can't hold anything you want to keep for later. Otherwise, you're gonna have like two inventories. Yeah, you don't have to turn on all of these options. You can just turn on like no vending. You don't have to turn right. on everything. So. Right, but I'm talking like hard. Or like no magic or rare drops. Like, oh, that would suck. Like, that would make it extremely difficult. But it would be great. <laughs> now, if there was a mod for a hundred times exalted orb drop, you know, that'd be interesting. Well, it would also suck because you couldn't sell it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so, so we're going down like the PoE uh, vocabulary. But yeah, so Iron Empires asks a good question. Never played the game. What's it like? Basically, it's like so it's a Diablo, Diablo done right. <laughs> <laughs> with, with skins Ouch. And, and a really wide a really really wide um skill tree pixels if you don't mind pulling up uh an image of the uh skill tree no i'm just gonna i'm just gonna play the playstation 4 release trailer and then we can kind of see the gameplay and stuff but go ahead and talk pause on the skill tree though i think pause on the skill tree okay we're when just gonna gets, yeah. we're just gonna it's wait like, for, the, for the skill the, tree <laughs> the thing that gets a lot of people, like, really trips out a lot of people is the size of the skill tree. And you can go anywhere with any character. Like, you, if you're a marauder, you can be a necromancer marauder if you want to be. Yeah, it'd be like in Diablo having a demon hunter that could get wizard skills. You know? That sort of right. thing is the equivalent. Or, or let's say a demon hunter that actually is a marauder with, with the same life bolt. Or a berserker, sorry. I want to play everything at once. Can that happen tree? You can make it happen. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't do... I don't know if you can do everything. You can't I mean, take the what? whole tree because you only have 119. Oh, I, yeah. yeah, I don't mean play the whole tree, but I want to play every class at the same time with my character. You can. It's called the Scion. Yep. <laughs> That's the character you get after getting to, what is it, a certain level or completing story once or something like that with a... I've been playing no, uh, I think you can just... Iron. I've been playing for years. Mm. I mean... No, I pixels. I'm pretty sure you have to do something to unlock the Scion before you can first play it. They can't, don't you? I thought... Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. So all you have to do is get to the the tower in Act Three uh, and release the girl from the bird cage. Okay, so there is a requirement. It's just way lower. Oh, there yeah. it was. There it was. That Let's was the skill here. tree. Yeah, let me go back. Or at least a corner of the skill tree. <laughs> I'm gonna go back a little bit more. Hey, thanks so much for the host. Boom, we're in the middle of the podcast. Hello, welcome. All right, yeah, so this is just a piece of that skill tree, but basically uh, you can kind of create anything that you need to. Uh, honestly, the first time you play, you should probably just find a build and, and just 
copy and paste and and try to make sense of how this works before you just start the game start leveling and then end up going down a path that doesn't really synergize you know like there's ways to to come over here and grab one piece and then go all the way back over here and grab another piece and by grabbing those two things your guy is like eight times as powerful but you have to kind of know that before you kind of go into it see that that whole tree is just absurd like there's yeah, it's just a, it's even monster, there's so it much sure. to learn on that you can't just play it once and know the tree <laughs> yeah exactly uh, are, am i able to post links in your uh, i think so thing? dude if not I'll, I'll i'll post it again for you oh it doesn't let me yeah, I, I, should, mean, I should see uh, maybe because it's an image uh once you learn the skill tree, though, it doesn't. It really doesn't seem that complicated to understand. Like it's it's a lot to take in. Yeah, but... the initial shock, you know. All right, I think that I see the link. Like when I first built it, we did a frostblades build, and I followed a build that was completely wrong, and I had to spend like twenty orbs of regret just to get back back to. That was not pleasant. Yeah, but I helped you. You helped, yes. Um, but it's still like Iron Empire. You asked about what uh, what was my uh, my name on uh, Mixer? It's that. I'll probably be doing some path fix out tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably end up moving. Like even even my stream will end up back in in Path of Exile. I'm really missing it, honestly. Like it's a it's a solid game that um, I didn't really give a, a good chance to uh years ago um but then that's actually how i met iman was streaming it over on mixer uh he came in and was like this guy has no idea what he's doing but he has a cool name so i'll hang out and help him out <laughs> so like, so thanks me, again thanks me, thanks here, thanks, thanks food, again for that iman <laughs> he's like giving me one piece of gear at a time slowly transforming me into awesome you know and uh but it was good um, it's it's definitely and the new, the new Delve League. I thought they added some really cool, uh, a, a nice infinite dungeon concept that you know a lot of a lot of games. You know, I think they try to figure out a way to do this, and I think they did it in a really good creative way um, to kind of make an infinite way of playing a game. Um, but uh, but yeah. So on top of that, the the private league announcement. They also announced the PlayStation Four release trailer. So yes. if anyone's playing it on console, it's on Xbox, uh, Xbox One right now. Um, but PlayStation 4, it'll be coming out uh, December 7th. So if that's something uh, you want to give a shot. I will, I will be picking it up. Yeah, and, it, and it's free. It's not like you have to pay to pick it up. So that's, that's yeah, pretty it's awesome. It's also free on PC, a Xbox. Um, they are looking at coming to Switch eventually from my uh, random sources that I and actually, like, this this gameplay trailer, like, had I seen a gameplay trailer like this, I probably would have played the game, you know, honestly, because I like the speed of Diablo 3 when it's when it's right, when you have a build that works. And uh, Path of Exile, initially, you don't have a build that works like some of this combat. But, um, but yeah, like, having the quick twitch running around uh, massive AoEs and stuff like that, like, that's, like, some of the best PoE play I've had. It's it's a lot of fun. All right, let's uh, let's yeah. jump on the next uh, next article, yeah, guys. Warframe. <laughs> so we got a. Uh, oh man. We got the Fortuna expansion. It's out now. I, when did when did it officially come out? A couple yesterday, days ago. Yesterday. Yesterday. I was at work and I could not play it. I was so sad. Yeah. So I haven't uh, I haven't booted it up yet. I want to see what the deal is. But at the same time, my guy, um, Warframe, is not nearly as ready for fortuna as i'd like him to be so it is, uh, it is it is it's totally ready because you got a big wild e monster behind it. <laughs> yes i could totally be carried uh, that's that's for sure but i think there was no, no, some no. stuff I said I... i'm behind you you know you take all the bullets for me oh yeah. okay yeah that's a good point i could just see everything and just have, have the uh be the meat yeah, shield, no. you know <laughs> you know i'm the only one getting carried by you mom so <laughs> i have I, a I... great King Curbs is sitting on my shoulder. I've taken both the left and the right shoulder. There's no room for you. The only thing I actually have that's actually good right now in the frame is I've got a really good gun. <laughs> <laughs> One 
really good gun. I, I have all you need is one good gun. gun. Yeah, honestly, like Soma Prime will get you pretty far. That's what <laughs> I'm using. Even, I'm using the Soma even the Prime. Lex Prime. Yeah, even the Lex I have Prime. all the. I have all the mods I need for the Soma Prime, yeah. but I need what was it like seventy thousand more endo to finish all the upgrades. Yeah, but you can you can take Soma Prime in any frame and do pretty well in that game. You know, just trying to trying to level up the different pieces you might need for later. Um, but yeah, Soma Prime is a solid solid weapon. I love that weapon. Yeah, I'm using a Soma Prime. I have a Max Frost Prime, and I got to get mods for that too. Yeah. Well, one one day we all gotta go on again and play again, and we all just stream and have fun and you know work on things. Curbs was Curbs was working really well at making money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Man, I got so <laughs> sad when my Ascalettos out damaged my Soma. Oh man, nice dude. 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 <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically so another free to play game that's really really decent you know and has actually gotten better with time just like path of exile warframe's done the same go ahead iman uh but going back to fortuna i see i've already seen the world my buddy was playing it last night and i was i just sat there and watched him play for a few hours last night it was excellent like the open worldness uh it's it's venus so it's all icy like there's a lot of ice everywhere it's kind of it looks great so are we are we snowboarding yet? Snowboard. Yes. Yeah, All right, dude. There. I I have to I have to spin it up this weekend. Like that like SSX Warframe just sounds awesome to me. Yeah, there there are some small achievements for doing like uh tricks off of things and stuff. Cool, uh, cool. There, there is some guilds that are already doing like guild events or <laughs> yeah, guild events. Nice. Where like best tricks, like best tricks videos. <laughs> get like a hundred plat or something so that's what that's what rock strong is doing too right yeah yeah rock strong will be doing something as well <laughs> all right i just want to get everybody in on it though i don't want to just do be like only one person you know no man let me just compete alone <laughs> well i'm not just give you money i don't care <laughs> <laughs> throw money at curbs all right so definitely check hey, out throw money at all of you guys so. I, you're awesome dude um, yeah, so definitely if you if you uh, jump in on Warframe, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, Iman and Zero Infinity have a pretty awesome clan called Rock Strong. Uh, really awesome dojo, really awesome like guild hall equivalent yeah. stuff. Um, and and a pretty very noob friendly. yeah, very noob friendly. There you go. That's the best way to put it because they they let me play with them, so that that says a lot, you know. Yeah, we take we will take any new player and help them become better. If they stay, it's up to you. It's up to that player. Mm -hmm. I like to classify myself as a semi. Like I'm still, a, but I'm not quite noobish. I like to classify myself as a noob noob. <laughs> yeah, you can stay noob in Warframe for a long time. I think like it's one of those games where you're like, yep, still a noob, still a noob. Got a ribbon mob, still a noob. You know, like. <laughs> but anyway, um, all right, let's it's... let's go ahead. It's also one of those games where you can excel very quickly. Um, my stepbrother played the game for months, but as new content came out, he, was, he wasn't able to play it quite as much because he's been having it with his computer. And I'd say probably in about three days, just because I was able to stuff, get some of the newer equipment, I was able to surpass him in three days. Like he'd been playing for months. But you also had like good help. Though. Like If you didn't have help, though, it, it can take one. Well, this is before I was actually playing it with you. When I first got my Soma, I had most of my mods already. I started playing it with you. Right. If you really don't have any help and you brand new to the game, it does take a while though, before you yeah. get it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like When I first started playing, I was playing with him, but I had nothing. What really yeah. got it jump-started, though, I'd have to say it was Twitch Prime. I uh, I got my Soma Prime out of that, and then I was able to just kind of go through most stuff at where I was at. Yeah, you get you get regular regular uh, upgrades through Twitch Prime for uh, for Warframe, either frames or weapons or um, yeah, it just seemed seemed like it was a nice every several months. I'm I'm sure they're gonna have some sort. Of, I haven't checked what the Prime Actually, loot is this pixels. month. Go ahead. Uh, I think it, I believe it was the Vectus Prime or the really good like top tier sniper like yeah, best in the game the, this month. So you should definitely pick that up. Yeah. Yeah, don't remind me. Everybody's got one but me again, so I'm just going to have to go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. Just like everybody's got a Sindo Prime but me. 
I don't have a Cinder I don't think I have a Cinder Prime. Yeah, you do. No, no you yeah, have a yeah, I do. I do have a Cinder Prime. Yeah, you do because I was, I was, I was very sad. <laughs> yeah. Which which one is the Shindo Prime? It's oh, the, it's the axe. big axe. The melee axe. Yeah. It's pretty awesome axe. I'm pretty right. sure you do. Let's uh let's wrap up Warframe and move on to the next article. We're like we got There's so much to talk about. I know, I know, but I have I have a limit on the podcast, so we, we have should to, do like a uh, like a push through specific specific <laughs> game series once a week. Yeah, like talk about or once a while, once a month or something. Game. We could do we could do a longer form than than an hour hour and a half, but um. But yeah, we'll have to figure out a different way to deliver that because there's limits with the uh, the infrastructure of the podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, all right, let's move on to another article. Tear this is down uh, these walls. I have a limit. All right, so we'll next talk shows. <laughs> next one is uh, is Pagan Online. Um, so uh, I'm all about any game that says like Diablo or like Path of Exile. So whenever I'm scrolling through my feed and I see stuff like this, like immediate eyebrow raising going on. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this is from Wargaming. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played any Wargaming games. I'm not a Wargaming guy, but um, I guess World of Tanks and then um, World of Warships and World of Warships, yeah. I think that's it, right? Like That's kind of like their big... That's big their deal. thing. Yeah. yeah. They might have had something else minor, but that's about it. Yeah, but that's pretty cool to see them pivot, you know, from the the war games into a dungeon crawler. So, uh, so I, I'm I'm kind of excited. I'm wondering what's going to happen. And I, they've got they've got monetization down. They've got um, a worldwide community down. They've got uh, un, they, their developers understand like listening to their communities and stuff like that. So, so this looks promising to me. Um, the one thing I, I think that'll stop curbs is it's very MOBA like. So I don't know. It's got that word I was gonna about to say. It's got that word that curbs curbs doesn't. <laughs> curbs goes I silent with a sigh. And then was starting to get happy. Diablo and Path of Exile action RPG like, and then like MOBA. with elements of MOBA like. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna turn out to be like a worse version of Breach. Ah, see, you saw that as well, because I, like, I was reading it. I was like, okay, cool. So they're coming after Breach because Breach has dungeon, an idea. It's a MOBA dungeon crawler MMO. Like, th- it's not. Uh huh. No, if if the MMO, if the MOBA is like. Legions, uh, like League of Legends, is just basically you can only have five people in the party, then fine. <laughs> or, or you can only have four different variations of skills, or something like that. You know, like, like that sort of thing. I don't know how they're gonna do it, but they got a lot of making up to do after putting MOBA in it. Oh, they lost him. <laughs> they lost him. Well, Tencent owns majority of it now. Tencent uh, for, owns like up. everything. <laughs> Yeah, if, if they don't own it, they're about to. Like they they understand yeah. investing in other companies. So, Tencent probably owns eighty percent of your cost at this point. <laughs> Tencent's own eighty percent of like my my machine. <laughs> Tencent owns eighty percent of the world. I think I think Tencent owns about fourteen percent of this stream. Honestly, I don't I didn't even know it. You sold rights <laughs> to the stream. I'm just joking. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, so, are we getting paid for this? No. Yeah, like, are we I, getting? I don't know. It? Checks in the mail, guys. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, so we got another. Uh, let's go away from gaming for a moment um, and start talking tech. We don't have anything in the new media category this time. Typically, we go gaming, tech, new media. Um, but I guess we talked a little bit about new media with like YouTube and the battle on the uh, Switch and all that. Um, but let's talk about the Fossil Sports smartwatch. So, uh, so Android wearables is something that's kind of kind of near and dear to me. I'm a I'm an adopter on the LG Watch Sport, so I still I don't I don't wear it while I stream. Um, but that's kind of like my daily driver watch. Um, let's so see it. Let's see it. I, I can go. I can go grab it when you guys are talking about it, but um, okay. I don't want to like interrupt. Um, so, so what I'm excited about is a new 
uh, a new chip for wearables on, on the Android side because they've been recycling the exact same processor for for a long time. True, very true. Um, and and really, like that's the biggest problem with uh, with Android Wear is that it just doesn't have that horsepower. You know, there hasn't I don't know how many iWatches there are now or how many Apple Watches there are now, three or four. And they keep on iterating and making it a little bit better. And and Android Wear OS is kinda of going stale on the power side. So um Hey, thanks so much for hanging out, Iron, for as long as you did, man. Um but yeah, so this is the LG Watch Sport. Um I like it a lot. I mean it's got all the all the waterproofing I need, all the sweat proofing I need. Um and it it notifies me all day long of everything important in my life, which I didn't know how important a watch was until you start using it. And then you realize like, wow, this is like saving my phone battery by not turning on a display to check a notification, just swiping away. You know, there's a lot of little things that, that are nice. So I'm looking hard at this. I'm more than likely going to buy it. Either my wife's going to get it for me for Christmas or I'll just find a way. But, um, I don't know when it's coming out, but, um, but I'm excited. So, it might be out right now. I don't know. I might just go to the fossil store and go, go. Yeah, it's available online and at retail locations. So I'm probably going to take a hard look at it. I, I don't know about you guys. What are you guys wearing? Do you guys do any wearables? Uh, I mean, I have watches. I don't do, I, I don't do like I watch the I, Apple watches or the, or the Android. Any, I just, I don't, I get it has its uses. But I don't see the practi enough practicality to really buy it, honestly, with the price tag. But Understood. My only me. concern is, like, my finger is bigger than that screen. True. Yeah, so, so one thing... So, okay, again, like, this is one of the reasons why I went uh, LG Watch Sport. Um, so it has this dial on the side, which is which is nice. Um so you don't even have to touch the screen to scroll through notifications and stuff like that or to have buttons on the side that launch certain things like I'll just be in a meeting, you know, and I'll I'll uh I'll just press this uh this bottom button and just pull my heart rate, you know, just to see, you know, like are these guys like legit ticking me off this much right now? Like I feel my blood boiling and I'm just like I just want to check my heart rate. You know, just nonchalantly just like pop it and just like, "Oh, they're still talking." And I just look back down, I'm like, "Yep." Like 94 BPM, that is what they're doing to me right now, you know? And then other times it'll be like a nice resting, like 52, you know? Like, and I'll be like, yep, I'm chill, we're good, you know? So it's nice just to have that as like a reference on the quantified self chart to know where I'm at. Well, like, for me, like, um, like, I'm about screen size because, like, regardless, like, you know, my hands are so huge. I mean, I got you. I can palm a basketball and yeah. just, you know not care yeah and, and like, that was I have really huge hands so like looking at this thing the only problem i have is the screen is even yours is the screen's a little too small for me like, no I yeah i hear you man like and that was one of the biggest problems with this one like the the reviews were just shredding it because they're like oh my god it's like you have like half a phone on your wrist like who needs a screen this big and it's like dude i need a screen this big like, i'm totally fine with it like what's the problem why is everyone freaking out um but i think this is a 45 and I think the biggest one they have is 43. Yeah, they have a 41 and a 43. I think my wife's closer to 40. She has just the LG Watch style. Um, and that one's, like, really small to me. So I think 43 might even be too small. Because at 45, I think I'm kind of used to, I'm pretty sure this is 45. But I'm, I'm kind of used to that size, so we'll see. But uh, right, right. but after after using it and having it with me, I, I could see going back a little bit on size. Because I know how much you actually touch the screen it's not it's not that much you know with the with the with the scroll wheel and all that it's kind of nice um but anyway i'm looking forward to it not if, not if it was like a pit boy on your arm that'd be pretty awesome yeah yeah there was that thing on kickstarter a long time ago it was like a watch yeah, that did that, that laser projection on your arm and then they're like yeah that's impossible to do multi-touch stop lying to people and i think they they shut that down i'm not sure <laughs> yeah, they so, did too. yeah that's that, a, was, that, was that was a bad so idea stupid. yeah people people were like uh that's impossible stop selling snake oil and they're like uh and then like they just kind of like vacate you know but uh anyway so uh let's jump on to the last article you guys cool with that yeah all right so we're talking foldable phones the foldable phones are coming. Um, 
No, oh my it's, gosh. it's unnatural. What horror movie did they pull this from? Let's just throw it in the trash and just <laughs> pretend it never happened. Is it gonna like crawl upside down upstairs like all right. on all fours? Guys, like, is that, <laughs> do not. Is that what's gonna happen? Do not throw this in the trash. It has a battery in it. You need to properly recycle the battery at least, okay? Are you saying this is a disposable <laughs> phone? Are you going to buy this at Walmart for like 20 bucks? This is where the story has gone. into Straight into the trash can. And we haven't even talked about what it is. That's that's the panel, guys. Thanks so much for coming. That's all we've got. You like a piece no. of paper? Can you, can aye, you aye. take notes on it? Do you need an eraser? Or? Yeah, and whiteout. Whiteout works on it too, I guess. A new feature. Um, all right, so I'm so. Hole punch. Can you put it in a ring? Hey, all right. So here's the thing. I'm a fan of the foldable display, and it, you know, you might you might say, why pixels? Why would you be a fan of this? And I'm gonna say because there's twice as much room for battery there. All right, and if you never ever unfold it, that phone is likely gonna last a couple days because it's basically a battery brick. And I like, well, why would you carry around a battery brick? It's like, I don't, uh, phone weight doesn't really bother me that much. So it'd have twice as much battery. You know, it'd be nice. Anyway. I mean, so when it folds down, it does look rather thick, though. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. I don't mind how thick it is. I, I just like the idea of not having to charge my phone and being attached to things like that, you know? Right, so when you have it in your pocket and... You have, I don't you care. Know, okay, I got I'm big pockets. Go, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. You know, this is a PG-13 like oh my gosh. kids. Dream. I can't go down the route I was going to. <laughs> anyway, it would look really, really big in your pocket, and that could cause some misconception. Oh right, right. Uh, totally tracking. Gotcha. Good. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so I know, I know Firebird had a thought because he's a developer, so he's thinking mobile development. I think. So go ahead, Firebird. What you thinking, man? I don't like it. Um, <laughs> so, and yeah, I'm thinking from a development standpoint on that one. Um, so, when you make an app, a lot of it is you've got to determine screen orientation, which is is fine. You got to mm -hmm. get screen sizes. And when you load an app, it's typically gonna it's gonna set the constraints to whatever the size of the screen is. So now we're looking at one got two different phone screen sizes so let's say you have this thing unfold fine it, it's got its landscape mode and it has portrait mode for whatever the screen sizes are assuming it does the whole rotation which i'm sure it but now you've also got to focus more on when you close it it's now got to get that orientation again for a third screen yep so apps aren't set to do that right now um I'm pretty certain no company other than Samsung right now has any kind of phone like that that they're going to do this on. So if they're going to roll this out, even if they do a beta version that these companies can get, it's still going to be a struggle. I mean, it's doable, but it's not going to be anything they've ever really had to work with before. Um, yeah, I hear you, Firebird. So, so one of the things you know, Android Pie has support for multiple screens. Um, so, I mean, we have that already. The uh, the thing is, like, um, just like when when uh, phones got rid of the keyboard. I mean, really, the iPhone was the one that really pushed that along. When people when people got rid of the keyboard, they're like, oh my god, oh my god, how am I going to type on a phone without a keyboard? That's crazy. Touch screen keyboards are awful. Like, there's no tactile feedback. Blah blah blah, all that stuff. And then we kind of just adapted, right? So I'm totally cool with the technology coming and then people adapting. Like the developer the developer app, you know, just grabbing a couple imports that do a new a new way of translating that screen orientation a quicker keeping the screen orientations in memory to make a quicker load. Um, I don't know if you guys can see on the stream right now, but the guy is closing the this is this is my problem all right so like the first gen all right again the first gen oh god first gen tech is scary right so he closes it and then finally the front comes on like that can't happen like it can't be it can't be a second it can't be two seconds it can't be half a second it has to be faster than that so um you know well we need you know super beefy processors to be you know displaying everything in a faster way to potentially three displays i don't know you know 
it looks like at least in that small clip there it doesn't look like it's trying to switch immediately from it to the front yeah he it presses like a button on the it, side or something yeah it looks like it's almost a second phone connected to the monitor and he's just pressing to turn it right so i don't yeah it, it does look like he's turning it off. i don't think it's like put the switch in the dock and it immediately goes to the tv type thing i'm saying yeah. i think it's just it it's almost like three phones in one it's just not also i'm really curious as to how they're not gonna have your screen constantly breaking with how that is but no oh, it's just the technology now yeah the displays are foldable glass. The uh, several years ago, the Olympics. I don't know if you guys remember that giant screen they rolled out. It was yep. where was it, Korea or Taiwan? I don't know. Where was the Olympics where they had that giant Korea. flexible display? Yeah, it was Korea. Korea. Yeah, they had this giant flexible display that they rolled out. Or China. Oh, yeah, was it China? I don't remember. Yeah, I but someone someone did this. Korea, this. Korea was there for the thing. So yeah, it was it was several years ago, but um, but yeah, pretty impressive. And you're like, oh man, if they can roll out a display like that, you know, like flexible displays are coming sooner than we thought you know i mean people there have been companies trying to target this for a while but it looks like it's finally working and then uh or at least working enough to potentially sell next year um but uh there's also this in the article on the verge there's also this royal flex pie which is another um which is like the opposite okay so like this has the display on the inside going 90 degrees folded or not 90, but 180 degrees folded on the inside. This Royal Flex Pie, I don't know if I can... Let me see if I can open up the article. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. It was in uh, Pion. Pion. Yeah, so this one goes backwards. And uh, it makes it so, you know, you can... You don't go that 90 or that 180 degree crack, you know? But it looks clunky. Like, what are they thinking? And it doesn't even, like, fold flat, you know? Like, it has, like, a bubble in the middle. So, uh, really, I think it, they're just trying to figure out ways to make batteries, not batteries flexible, but put those, put batteries in the right places and then put cables to attach the batteries so that it doesn't explode or whatever. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is coming. It's a, it's a real thing now, so. Yeah. I think this specific phone they're putting out is going to die a horrible, tragic death. But yeah, it's coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with Gen 1 dying. You know, like, this is just part of pushing I mean, technology. Pixel, well, I mean, so is that a foldable phone in your pocket, or are you just happy to see it? Exactly. <laughs> now, what I do like um, about it is they are working on doing multi-active windows so you can have three apps running at the same time on this new phone that yeah. there i think is going to be pretty cool because i mean there are apps that you can <laughs> run together they, they are needed together so that's going to be the good thing about it and ksm uh, also responds that hopefully the iphone dies when this comes out yeah that, that would be nice ksm but I, I don't i don't see it happening dude yeah. And if they're working on this, then Apple's working on it too. So we'll see what Apple comes out with. Actually, I think this article here actually makes a note saying that Apple is looking at pushing one out. I think it was in 2019, possibly. Yeah. yeah. So. Damn it. And how do you think. <laughs> okay, Sam, our dreams are all crushed right there. <laughs> how do you think. Uh, Google will respond with their Pixel line. Then will they push something like this out as well? Or yeah, I mean... so so the Pixel line is and yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a Pixel one. guy. Um, I think oh. Iman's a Pixel guy. Yeah. Google Pixel Two XL, man. Yeah. So so Pixel is nice because it's like the the flagship developer handset. So if if Pi and the next the next OS after Pi um, for Android is really pushing multiple displays and multitasking and and you know they, they've done other updates in the past for multitasking so like split screen on my phone is amazing i'm sure iman agrees um i don't know if everyone uses it as much as i do but usually i find more apps that don't work than do work because i'm always trying to trying to multitask but um, that's the problem is finding something that actually works but then, yeah exactly like a lot of the, a lot of the google native apps will play nice together but anytime you have like some third party 
garbage. It just doesn't play. Um, yeah, like Warframe, uh, Warframe app. Yeah, like the Warframe app, and and you know, pretty much any <laughs> game app is like no, no. It's like what? <laughs> like what you, you want to you want to do what in game? No, you're just gaming, dude. Nice try. Uh, maybe Diablo Immortal will be multitasking. Uh, that's funny. Um, but anyway, how <laughs> you guys like that? That's that's the I'm donut. Serious. See, I just <laughs> brought that back. I just brought you, that back. You brought a donut. You brought like a chili pepper donut. Chili pepper donut. Into, oh man, is it a ghost pepper donut though? Like, that'd like, be awesome. Yeah, it's like a hot pepper bakery and it's like it's, it's, everything's uh, exploded all right i well, think maybe, maybe the, yeah case is right maybe they'll sell extra copies that way yeah. all right i think that's where we're gonna call it guys all right love with yourself <laughs> all right so thanks everyone for tuning in uh for i think this was episode eight i didn't say that in the beginning um but yeah this is so episode eight. eight thanks so much everyone um for the for the end here let's do the streamer shout out streamer shout out today goes out to one of uh one of our guests on the round table uh firebird thanks so much for uh for hanging out with us dude appreciate your time oh absolutely it was great that picture so definitely uh <laughs> definitely check him out on mixer are you are you anywhere else dude that people need uh, to follow you and stuff i'm also on twitch i stream on both mixer and twitch and you're on twitter yep um all of them is firebird 129 same cool, man Good stuff, good also, stuff. Also, we have the other Twitter that we use a lot, uh, Gamers Against Pants. Yeah, we also have Gamers Against Pants. You guys can drop a link on that if you like. I think I actually have that one right here. Awesome. All right, so thanks again for coming out, man. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, and special shout out to the rest of the round table, Curbs and Iman. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for uh, for being here. Uh, We're looking forward to some pass tomorrow, man. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, and then if you're uh, listening to this on YouTube, uh, you know, feel free to comment away. Uh, I'll respond. Uh, give us your thoughts. Maybe if you have an article for next podcast, you can drop that in there. And uh, we also have that on our Discord, um, which I think is here. And then um, if you uh, if you see the podcast on Anchor or Spotify or Google Podcasts or whatever else, it's not on Apple yet for whatever reason. I'm working on that. Um, if it is on Apple, awesome you're hearing this on apple and i figured it out nice right um but uh but if not i uh, just just you know i appreciate the likes the downloads the subscribes all that stuff the shares um comments applause whatever whatever app does whatever i appreciate all that interaction that's fantastic um thanks so much everybody i think we're gonna do a final kick to the curbs segment and then wrap this up curbs you got anything ready for us uh, yeah don't, don't don't leave us waiting, man. What do we got? Down the rabbit hole. Hey, <laughs> gamers. Have you ever wished you could upgrade your gaming skill? <laughs> no? Oh, well, no. oh, crap. Well, if you ever wished you could be, like, the best blacksmith ever, then I've got the trick for you. For only $9.99.99.99, you can be this. And Pixels play the video. <laughs> what video, dude? <laughs> In Discord. <laughs> we went over this last week, Pixels. We really need you to get you this video. It will really upgrade your podcasting <laughs> flexibility. And... You'll just be the greatest known You're terrible. ever. No, put it at the beginning. No, oh, put it no. at the beginning. At the beginning. <laughs> and then unmute it. Un unmute it? Yeah, un unmute it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. This is your gaming skill. Thanks so much for hanging out, guys. You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. And this, this is what is known as a Super Saiyan that has ascended past a Super Saiyan. And this is to go even further beyond. And you just your social security credit card number and you can that can be
Thanks for coming out, guys. <laughs> curbs, curbs, curbs. Oh, that was great. I told you I had a good one.